Okay, so welcome. In this video, we're going to start digging a little more into Rust. So some of this I've sort of covered before, but I'm just going to go back from a blank slate. Um, we can fire up just whichever folder we want to work in, fire up a terminal and write um, cargo new project and I'm going to call this Tico. There's a board game called Tico and that's going to be sort of what I'll do. I'll work on that. This will create this new project. Now there is one thing that we need. I'll just pop in here. Now what we can do, it's this SDL to DLL. We've got some options. We can simply copy this and always have it in the root folder, wherever our project is, or we can paste it into a, a common folder in our path so that we always have access to it. That works too. But um, anyway, let's open this up with Visual Studio Code. And I just want to basically link this SDL2 library as a dependency. So I'll just go to the Toml file go to the dependencies and I'll write SDL2 and I'll just use this star. That just means use whatever the latest version. That's fine. So then I'll go over to the main file and what I'm going to be looking at in this session, apart from all of the setting up the window and everything is I'm also going to look at events. So, Let's just go to the main function and we'll need to create a few sort of helper bits. I will need a context. There we go. Okay, cool. So here we have created an SDL context. We'll also need a video subsystem. Um, now, like I said, this is really covering over the same ground that I have done in previous videos, but I just, because um, I guess the previous videos were also meandering around the language itself. I just wanted to have one where we just start from scratch. So we'll go get that context, create the video. There we have it, we have our video subsystem, and then we'll need a window. So this is, this is important, I guess. Um, I'm calling a function on the subsystem to create the window, and we'll see this actually comes back a number of times. I'm just gonna call this Rust, and we'll go with a width of, actually, let's initialize this. So let's go, um, So we can use those parameters there. Okay, now if we look here, we can see that this is creating a window builder. So then we can say, okay, build that. And then this is a result. So we will unwrap it. However, as I've mentioned before, this is line is starting to get a bit long and we have the option of just flipping over to the next yeah, to the next line. So then I'm going to create a few new things. I'm going to create a canvas, which is an abstraction of the space that we can render to. And I'm going to make this a mutable object because, well, I'll be mutating its state. Okay, so I'll call into canvas. And by the way, by the way, this, this early bit of code uh, can be found in the official Rust SDL2 documentation. If you just look up Rust SDL2, we have this SDL2 Rust docs. Ah, that's a pretty cool channel down there. I'm just joking. Okay, so this is more or less similar to the example that I'm going through, but I will be referring to this as we go along because it's really important to know 
where to find things. Okay, so I'm not I'm not pulling things out of thin air. Okay, so we turn this into a canvas, and again that gives us a canvas builder. So then let's go ahead and build that. And then this is a result, so we'll go ahead and unwrap it. Okay, fair enough. Now what we could do is we could say, okay, um, go canvas, set the draw color to something, and then clear it. And that will automatically draw over the whole surface. Um, but just as an exercise, I'm going to create a rectangle, a rect to represent the screen area. So we'll go, okay. I'm going to call this screen area and I'll go SDL. Yeah, let's go SDL two rect package. And then within that, the rect class. And then within that, we have a whole bunch of these. Um, it's, it's new and you will take some parameters there. And by the way, I'll just bring this up. It's really important to see where we get this from. If I wasn't sure about this, but I've, I've worked with SDL2 before, so I have some idea that it's that rect is a module within SDL2. So we go in here, down here we have rect, and then rect has the rect struct, which is essentially a class. And then that has this you know, the, all of these functions and these parameters, which we can check. Um, but it was the new function that I needed. Now there is a way that we can simplify this because right now this is not great, especially later on when we get into more complicated code. So what we can do is we can instruct the program of a namespace that we're using. So I'll say, all right, we're going to use the um, SDL2 rect rect namespace so then i can go ahead get rid of this and it works the same way okay so i'll go zero zero for the top left corner and then we'll use that screen width and screen height so again strictly not necessary not strictly necessary i mean but i just wanted to go through that example of creating a new thing because this pattern of using the function as part of the the struct namespace comes up a little bit. So, okay, then I'm going to define a clear color. And again, so if we're not sure, we can look back here and say, okay, well, I want to be colors. So let's go back. It's not wrecked. Um, there's a whole bunch of these. But if I'm not sure, I can just search and here we go. Let's search for color. And we see that this is within the SDL2 pixels module namespace. So we can go back here and say, okay, use SDL2 pixels color. All right, so we'll go, oh, not that one, this one, color, and then we have all of these different things. I'm going to use RGB and I'll go with, what was it, 64, 192, and 255. So there we have it. That is the, the color that I will be blitting to the screen. So that's all well and good. What I want to do is I want to set up my game loop. So I'll say, okay, um, I have a mutable variable called running. Set that to true. Then I'll keep going through. And what I'll do is I'll get the canvas and I'll, for this one, I'm going to call the fill rect. Um, 
uh, not screen position, screen area. There we have it. But then the question is, well, which color? So if we look here in the documentation, it says uh, fills the rectangle on the current rendering target with the drawing color. Okay. So in order to do that, we'll need to set the drawing color. So we'll get the canvas set draw color and I'll just pass in that clear color. Okay. So far so good. Now this does complain that it's returning an, a result and which could be an error. So we should check for that, but I'm just going to leave that for now. By the way, if I go canvas clear, does that throw an error? I guess this is probably the function that we should be using and I will fix that up in future, but I just wanted to show that rectangle example. So the next step is typically we would update the screen. And the way we do that is we go canvas present and that presents it for rendering that updates the display. But wait, if you've had any experience with SDL, you'll know that if you do not check for events, you have an event queue that piles up and the whole program freezes. So we should probably check for events. That's a good idea. Now, let me just bring this up. Okay, so we go back and we have, what is it? Event is the module to check. So we check in there and we have all of these things. It's not, this isn't quite what I want. So the struct that I'm after is called an event pump. And what this event pump does is it's sort of like it's sort of like a reference or a handle to the event queue. It's something that we can repeatedly pump, repeatedly poll. And um, yeah, it has these two functions here, poll event and then poll iter. And poll iter will repeatedly call poll event. So let me just show you how this works. So what I'll do is I'll go, okay, make a mutual mutable object called the event queue. And what we do, so we get the SDL context, get the event pump and unwrap it. So this will give me an object that I can repeatedly query, basically. So um, what we can do is We'll loop through, so we'll go for event in event queue, and I want to call get the iterator there. As you can see, this yeah returns yeah terminates once there's no more pending events, and this is important to sort of flush out the the system. So what we want to do is we want to do a switch statement, but um, the way we do switch statements is with a match statement. And I just found out recently that Python has a match statement as well that they got as of 3.10, I want to say, which essentially is a switch statement. And it works like this. Every switch statement needs to have a default case. The default case is indicated with an underscore. And this is basically saying in the default case, do absolutely nothing. So let's have a look at the other cases. Well, what are the cases? How are they represented? So again, I'll, well, no, not that, not that. Again, I'll go back to the event module and I'll have a look at the event class or struct. And actually this is a, an enum and each of the fields represent a different event and are a struct of their own and have a whole bunch of associated things, fields, arguments, values. So what I want is I want quit. If I can, oh, is it not alphabetical? Anyway, it's the quit event. There we go. So see that the quit event has an argument associated with it. Now watch this. Let's go, 
Um, I'll just I'll just use all of this. So I'll go use SDL two. Just the same as before. And I'll say, okay, if the value matches event quit, then what will we do? There we go. Okay, so I'll explain what this is doing in a second. Um, but for now, I think I'll just run this and verify that it's working. So I'll just hit the arrow button here. We'll compile. And yep, that's a color that I expect. And uh, if I hit escape, that triggers the quit event. Running is false. The loop exits. Okay, cool. So... Now I want to uh, do another event. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't have a nice event get name thing. Well, maybe we do. I don't know. But um, I couldn't find it. So what we'll do is I'll just go, okay, in the mouse motion event. Now have a look at this. It gives me all of these, all of these arguments. So for now, I'll just bring this down. And let's say... I just want to display the, let's say I just want to display the, the mouse motion. By the way, we just put these commas here, makes it nice and clean. Okay, so I'll go, okay, and why not also also print the relative mouse movement, check that that's working as well. So the thing I, I like about this is it automatically fills out all of the parameters that I have available to me when I detect an event. So if you've done any SDL stuff before, you know sometimes there's a bit of digging around. If you've got a key press and you're not quite sure, well, how do I get the letter that was associated with the key press? Looks pretty good. Um, anyway, so let me just run that and check. Hopefully I haven't messed anything up. Now we can see on the terminal that it is printing out the X and Y. So we can check um, X equals zero is on the left hand side. X equals 800 is on the right hand side and Y equals about zero at the top and 600 at the bottom. It's also giving the relative movement. So all very cool, that is working. Okay, now, I guess the issue is we can see that all of these are unused. Now, the way we ignore a variable typically is we would put an underscore, but this doesn't quite work in this case. So the way we actually ignore it is we put two dots. But if I just put two dots here, Rust will complain. It's, what's this? This two dots means uh, essentially ignore everything here, um, in including the stuff after it. So what we'll do is we'll put two dots on the end and that works just fine. And that's essentially what these two dots are doing here because the quit event has a timestamp associated with it. I guess that's maybe the time of the quit or something, and we don't need that. So we'll just ignore that there. And there we have it. In future, we will probably start shipping this off into different structs and things, but for now, this is, a, this is where we're at. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. All the best, and yeah, see you again soon. Bye.